Yeah. Right, so um, on welcome to my uh, welcome to my new podcast. You're my first victims for the alternative views podcast. So Scott looks uh, looks like his eyebrows are about to fall <laughs> off his head then when he said that. Um, <laughs> so we've got uh, Scott McHugh, uh, BKB fighter, professional BKB fighter. Um, he's a bit of a loose cannon. Uh, he don't know what we don't know what he's saying best at times, but he's here anyway to speak. And then we've got James Canelli, a BKB fighter as well, ex opponent and. Uh, a very good friend as well. And then we've got Porrick McDonough from the Golden Team. Golden Team's main coach and gym owner. Um, nice to see you guys. So it's good to have you on my first show, First Victims. And uh, I want to see, how, what, see what shit you're going to give me back as well. I want to give you some shit. Yeah, man. It's great <laughs> to be here, man. So, nice one there. So, James, I just want to ask you uh, a few questions first. So what's it been like having a full training camp over in Leeds and uh, having to juggle life over in Birmingham with the gym you've got over there as well? Uh, well, obviously with the gym now, the gym's not open at the moment, so it gives me that rest time. But uh, coming over to uh, uh, Golden Team in Leeds, it's, it breaks up the whole week, you know, and, and, it, and it's glad that I've come down there because it just it's, it's learned me a lot of new things coming down there. So uh, I've handled it really well, you know. Everyone says to me, oh, it takes ages, it must take ages to get I don't really care, you know what I mean? It's only a couple of hours drive down there. And, I'm here three days on the week, so... Yeah, you're keeping your focus to get back down every day anyway, yeah, aren't you? So. It breaks everything up. I do all my boxing down there, and I go back to Birmingham, and I do all my fitness up there, so it's, 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 it's working right. It works for me at the moment. So do you, ever, do you ever think about going for a run around here, come, come up with the, uh, around the woods? I've got to be deadly honest with you. The training sessions are that hard up here at the moment, and that, the two a day that here, you ain't got time to go on a run. You're, just, you're trying to recover for the next session before the runs, and that's why I go back to Birmingham, and then I do all my runs there and my hill sprints and stuff. How about the sparring, you had some good sparring up here. Good, very good sparring. Uh, I've had some six foot two amateurs in there that tall as anything. I've had some stocky. I've had Darius over there. Some f very good lads in the, in the Golden Team. Yeah, and what, what improvements have you seen in them? You know what? I always knew that you were a great fighter. Obviously, you fought him yourself. Yeah. I watched the fight back. Um, I think that is the last sort of four or five weeks has turned into a bit of a monster. And the lads that I have brought down for him. Um, are at a certain level that are good kids is dealing with them for fun so it's quite funny actually tonight I've got a couple of pros down that are good high level pros that are undefeated that are really going to test him <clears throat> each and every week you know we're just pushing on them moving forward a little bit but in ability wise without giving too much away I can't believe how much he's come on in the time we've had obviously it comes from Thursday to Saturday and in that time he has for probably five sessions and we do a lot more technical work smudge as you know yourself we yeah, have yeah. we have certain days where we do certain stuff uh, we have sparring and we look back on the sparring the first week he come down i'll be honest with you i thought whoa i might have a bit, bit of a task yeah. on my hands here obviously he's been out of the gym and out of the ring for a long time and just the the program that we've put together i just can't believe the improvements of him I, i'll be honest with you he could fight saturday yeah, yeah he could yeah. fight the kids saturday and be ready I've had to pull him off the gas a little bit. Yeah, on the uh, training session we used the other day, and I could see it was uh, it was pulling away like yeah, like yeah. we were doing pretty well. And, uh, and Scott as well, Scott's improving Scott. loads. I've, I've seen the videos, and uh, I've been down there in training session with his. Yeah, and he's looking at he's looking a hell of a lot he's, better, a lot more fluid. Do you know what? He's actually for a thick cunt. He's fucking. <laughs> sad. He's surprised. Listen, he surprised me. And I've Darius. I was speaking to Darius the other day, and. Obviously, I've not got a lot of lads in the gym at the moment, but I'd probably say he's the most improved kid that I'm working with. Do you do like combination? Do you have to do like show him like triangles and squares? No, what I do is I put it on a fucking, I put it on a fucking whiteboard. And then the, <laughs> listen, I put it I put it on a whiteboard and he still gets it fucking wrong. Now I'm only joking. Listen, honestly, all joking aside, I know we have a crack and stuff like that, but talking in his favour. Uh, he's definitely the most improved lad in the gym. I can't believe. Obviously, I've had a look at certain interviews and stuff. Oh, the kid who is fighting. I have had a slight look at both the lads. Right, yeah. we're not worried about them. Let them fucking worry about us. It's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. no, no matter worry, we'll and, change a thing. Will I, it? And he's on about. Oh, he don't move his head and he don't move it doing this and that. Scott on the day will either beat him at his own game or he'll beat him at Scott's game. So mm. it's up to him, whichever one he wants to bring to the table because. I've I've had quality sparring for him. As you know, everything yourself, I'm saying to you, Smudge, I can, you can fucking back yeah, up. We've had yeah. some great fights together and we've had some great nights and been very successful. And, uh, yeah, I'd put my house on both of them. Yeah, yeah, Scott, I've seen that Scott's improved a hell of a lot. And, uh, and I think that right now the, uh, the the shot he's got, the, the title shot, yeah. I think it's come at the right time for him. Well deserved as well. Yeah, yeah well definitely, deserved. definitely. So how excited are you about the gyms opening back up and what? Fucking and, and, and are you looking at putting some shows on as soon as for the amateurs? 
Well, do you know on the amateur scene, I've heard different things really, Smudge. I've heard that the amateurs can't fight until next year. I don't oh, know right, how true yeah. that is. As soon as I can get my lads out, they'll be out. If there's a show, they'll be fighting on it. They'll be back in the gym, grafting as normal. Um, just before gym shut down, we're having 40, 50 boxers in class. Oh, yeah, all, it was, it was, all different it was brilliant, talents, yeah. you know. You've got Thai boxers, boxers, bare knuckle pros, everybody working together, everybody on the same page. And I just want to, we're coming to a point where the gym were really peaking and we're having some big fights coming up, especially yourself, prize yeah, fighter yeah, yeah. final. Yep. I don't know what's happening with that. We'll have to have a chat about that. But, um, we're on to Joe Smith Brown and uh, Jim Freeman about that. Hopefully, we'll yeah. get that fight for not this next show, but the show after. That'll be great. Yeah, that'll, that'll be, be great. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, with Scott, um, you're going to see a different man. We've approached things totally <laughs> different professionally and I've generated a very good bond with both of them like I do all my fighters. So you're going to see two kids that are fucking, you know, two bullets, want to stop them, want to kill them on the night. Simple brilliant, as that. Brilliant. Oh, what's this uh, title fight mean to you then, Scott? What's, yeah, uh, it means world, mate. Like I said, I've worked my way up for it. Um, my debut with Lafferty, it wasn't the fight I wanted. And... Um, after that, I've had a lot of wins, a couple of wins, you know what I mean, by um, knockout. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this belt and um, it's coming back to Leeds. Yeah, of course, man. I mean, you got, you, well, you're up against Nathan Leeson. Nathan Leeson's back uh, to back involved with BKB after a long layoff. I think he'd, uh, he'd had a bit of time out for personal reasons. Yeah. But um, he's, he's come back and he's shown that he's, uh, he's in the mix straight away. Uh, what was, he fought? Oh, was it Jay Eggleston? Was it he fought? No, uh, um, Nathan Leeson fought uh, Matt Piper. Matt Piper, he yeah, fought Matt it? Piper, but yeah, yeah. No disrespect to Matt Piper. Do you know what I mean? He's he's not the best at, at bare knuckle. He, he always gives in, but I can see. Yeah, he's yeah. Got well, no that's your opinion, well. mate. You're entitled to that opinion. So. <laughs> no, he, he, do you know yeah. what I mean? I like I say a lot of respect for him, but. Do, well, listen, you got to have respect level. for the lad. You got to have respect for the guy that's getting in there, anyway, aren't you? So yeah, it's not yeah, like course, it's not like yeah. you don't respect him, but you, but your opinion is your opinion, and I, yeah, I respect that. that. Like he's been out of game for a while, Lee, and he's tough. You know, I've watched him before, like five years ago. He's um, fought Sean George, he's beat Scott Midgley. He's, he's times had, have changed, haven't they? But you know, time, what I mean? times has changed, and um, he's that they were fights at um, what like eighty three kilos, I think. He's coming down now to seventy three kilos. Yeah. So that's my strongest weight, and I think it's gonna be it'll be a tough night for him anyway. He's gonna be in a fight. Yeah, no, you're looking for uh, fighting afterwards, and you're beating him. Who, who's next in anyone line? That, anyone will get offered. I'll, I'll never turn a fight down. I, I don't call people out. I'll just whoever they put in front of me, I'll fight them, even if it's you. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll smash you out. Bit, <laughs> bit ash, bit <laughs> ash, mate. Uh, calling me out here. Uh, uh, I'm only here, mate. Come get it. <laughs> You'll never make it. Mate. You'll <laughs> never, never make it, mate. I'll be, I'll be out of the room in no time. I'll be gone. I'm <laughs> fighting fit right now. So, right, so mate. I've, um, I've heard you're, uh, you're in a new five-star hotel. Why are you stopping up here, mate? You enjoying it? Well, it's definitely not the one you got me to start off with. <laughs> 25 know, pounds a night B&B, man. You know what? I went down the other day, man. I swear to God, he's living in, he's living in great accommodation. Nah, I'll do all myself give now. You, I don't let Smudge get me any hospitality, mate. Don't Fuck it. He had to keep his trainers on each shower, didn't oh, he? Oh, mate, listen. There's about 150 <laughs> people that lived in this year. Yeah. We had next-door neighbours, mate. So okay, yeah. Question for Scott. How... How... One second. How hard uh, do you hit? How hard can you hit? Once not my grand spark out. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's pretty it's hard. Pretty not, hard, I've, mate. Yeah. I've seen your, I've seen your nan. I've seen your nan. She's tough as old boots. She's got her right chin on her. Fuck her. She have her teeth in or not? <laughs> <laughs> would you ever? Would you ever do any bare knuckle boxing classes at the gym? You know, teach them about technique and about uh, you know because the defense is different. You know, the, the way you throw punches can be different. Yeah, it is. It is totally different. And until I got involved myself, obviously I've worked with a lot of fighters over the years. Probably since the age of fifteen, I had my first fighter. But coming into bare knuckle, it's exciting for me as well. Uh, until I started properly working with you, Smudge, it, things are different, and you've got to adapt differently. And it's a massively growing sport. And until you ringside. I didn't realise how brutal it was. Oh, you Obviously, hear it, you? You, can hear you can hear every shot. And, you know, I've you done Thai boxing you? and it's a rough sport, same as Scott. It's rough. But, you know, I'll be honest, that yeah, 100%. I mean, lads like yourself and these lads coming through, I'd love to go to another dimension in the gym and, and bring bare knuckle fighters through like that because I think it's going to grow and I think it's going to be really up there with... Uh, the boxing in UFC yeah. if it's done right and well, it's, it's done professionally it's a, it's a bit of an older man's sport at the moment yeah. but I think there's, the younger lads are going to start yeah. coming through I mean uh, there's a there's a few lads being mentioned to me just recently um, there were one of, one of the lads from a, a, is it ATV? Um, yeah yeah ABT, ABT yeah, good yeah. Gym. 
Um, lad, what's his name now? He's, he's just trying to arm anyway, but he messaged me the other day saying about Slamane, Aaron Slamane. Aaron Slamane, yeah. Aaron Slamane yeah. that's the one. Oh, yeah, he's been that. James Good yes, kid, yes, done a bit yeah, of K1 yeah. and that. And he's wanting yeah. to get involved with the BKB, and yeah. so you were getting the, the, yeah. the younger lads involved now, which is a good thing. One, one thing I'd say about the younger generation is it's it's a good sport. You make a lot of sacrifices, but it's a fucking rough sport, and the money's got to be right. Yeah, yeah. The money's got to be right for these young kids coming through because at the end of the day, you know, you're, to, you're getting hit with your top two knuckles all the time. You know, and your fucking ribs and your journey, it's rough. You can, it's like boxing, you can get knocked out in one punch, it'll ruin your career. You know, it can ruin your career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's a little bit different with boxing. Uh, you get brought through the ranks a little bit more, and then you step up at a certain time. Bare knuckle, you're fighting who you're fighting. Yeah. And I think we're producing bare knuckle fighters. You've got to be a rough kid who's yeah. got a fucking heart. Oh, yeah, you've got to have a lot of heart. And, in this then, game. You, and then you tune it. Do you know what I mean? You somebody who, who likes fighting, who likes being involved in a fighting sport, who don't really give a fuck. You need to know how to tune them mentally and physically into BKB fighters because it's all right having a straightener on an estate where you're throwing a fucking right up from your ass. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You've been out for fucking two days and fucking Ted fucking Bundy's called you out. You know what I mean? You're having a fucking one on one two days. Later. It's not like that. It's a sport. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a professional sport now. So you're looking at an eight week camp and you're training like a pro. Well, look at that. We've just been on uh, on a Zoom call to uh, one of the big sporting names in you know in the, in the world. So yeah. you know that that quite shows you the uh, the direction we're going in now. Yeah. I mean, look, we've got James James fighting for the world title next, which is uh, which is no joke, and he's uh, he's fighting against the guy that he's, he's fought before. How, yeah. How's it uh, How's it feeling going in this fight? James, how, uh, how are you I feeling? Just feel you're much feeling better good? than I. Obviously, it's, it's different this time. I only got to and when before it was uh, a pick out of a few guys I was going to fight, done it. Yeah. So yeah. this one, it's just all been on one man. You know, train for one man, get ready. I had a full eight weeks to get ready for it. So uh, I just feel good. You know what I mean? I'm just tired. Now. I'm tired, but everything's going well. But this is the fight you wanted as well, isn't it? This is the main fight you wanted been, back. There yeah. was no point having the other fight in my eyes. You know what I mean? We waited a year. It's a year since I fought. So this is the fight that I wanted, you know. I need to put this to bed first and then I can move on with my career and uh, when I become world champion, <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a lot more bigger fights out there for me. Yeah, of course, man. <laughs> I think, well, they're, they're expanding now as we speak, aren't exactly they? They're getting involved with uh, with other countries and, and they're getting more TV deals as we speak. So obviously as the sport grows, there'll be bigger fights coming. Mm. Uh, Scott, who, who are you actually looking for next? Is there anybody in particular you would fight? If there was, if there was to ask you to, to pick a fighter, would you pick? Um, you have to pick someone, would you? Pick? <coughs> I know, like, <coughs> I know that Toby, you know, you know Toby yeah. Binder, and I wouldn't mind fighting him because I think our styles will clash. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah, you're both from a, watch, yeah. from a Thai boxing style. Both from, see, we've got the same style, um, we've got, do you know what I mean? So I think we'll clash us. I don't know, I think your style's changing that much now. I think yeah, he's a bit more well, yeah. so far. I think, yeah. he's, uh, I think he's done a cracking job so far, so uh, I think the style, the game of, the, of styles has is, is changed for yeah. you. Um, I think I think we are head movement now, and and the fact that you're throwing punches whilst you're moving backwards and forwards, I think that's going to change your uh, your game completely. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So it's going to put Nathan on back foot. I think because he's expecting a different fighter. He's expecting yeah, a fight. He's going to come out swinging. I think, but uh, I won't. I'm not going to do that. Well, I'm not going to give him a game plan away. Yeah, yeah of course, but, yeah. of course. So anyway, what's it like being a, a father again? You've had a, another addition to the family, little Rocco. Which one have I got back 10 kids? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I yeah, mean, yeah, the, the legitimate yeah. ones. Yeah, he's growing up ones fast. Ones that like. you know about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little Rocco, yeah. He's uh, nearly eight months now. I heard he's uh, been uh, throwing some leather already. Been it your chin a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I've got a question for you. Right. Bare knuckle being such a rough sport. Yeah, yeah. Would you let your boys fight in it? Um, I'd let my son fight it when he's older, yeah. If he, if he wants to give it a go. I won't let my daughter, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'd let me uh, sub. about yourself, yeah. Smudge? Because his fucking shares got a decent right hook on him. I would. I would. Yeah, no, me out I yeah. would. I would because I'm. I'm the, in the firm belief that uh, glove fighting is uh, a lot more dangerous than than bare knuckle. Really? Yeah, mm. and I mean superficially, yeah, you, it's a lot more dangerous in the fact that you're getting yeah. cuts yeah. and you can damage your hands. Yeah. But um, you know, mentally, you're actually not as you're not in, you're not in any worse uh, situation. I, I do think they've got it right on that film because you either fight five tools or seven tools is a title fight. You know what I mean? You're in there for two minutes. It's quite a good. Yeah, um, yeah of course it is. Yeah. Thing is that obviously boxing's ten, twelve rounds, but you know in boxing you can burn fucking millions. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's the risk you take on both sports. What do you want from what sport? You know, and uh, I've, I firmly believe as well, we all smudge after last fight. I spoke to a few people 
the fight with Sean George. I thought that you won myself, and you know I'm straight to die. If you get beat, I'll tell you straight as much. Yeah, yeah. I thought you won that fight. But I do think that the bare knuckle suits you to the ground. Yeah, you sometimes can be a fantastic boxer and fucking... It just doesn't happen with bare knuckle game. Have you noticed that sometimes, boys? Mm. Come from well, I fought him, yeah. didn't I? Just, I just knew he was going to launch it. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of waiting and waiting. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, I think, so, yeah, I think certain fighters, just like runners, are cer uh, certain runners are made for 100-meter mm. sprints. Some it. are made for 400-meter sprints. Yeah. Some are made for hurdles, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think having different various types of combat sport you your MMA you got your taekwondo your karate yeah. I mean let's be honest this is just an extension of boxing yeah. or boxing is just an extension of this yeah. so I would say in, in the sense of um, BKB being a sport that needs to be up there and uh, and recognised as one of the main sports I, I'm, I'm firmly in a good belief of that because yeah. Because it, it teaches just the same discipline as boxing does. It teaches just the same sort of um, same sort of skill set. In fact, yeah. if anything, it teaches a bit more of a harder skill set because yeah. the punches come in a lot faster when you've got nothing yeah, on your hands. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be able to move a lot faster. And when them hit, when they hit you, you know you, you can't be no, no squeamish little kid. You, you've yeah. got to be able to take the shots and roll with it. How can you get? Brought into bare knuckle fighting, it's not like you're going to take them to an amateur bare knuckle gym, are you? When they're ten I think, years I know, old, I think, I think, I, think um, <clears throat> I think for those that that are successful in boxing. That want to come over at an early age. Yeah, I think they should maybe try it. And if it's not good, yeah. no good for them, then then go back to the the good yeah, spot. Yeah. But I think if you come over to BKB and it's something that that you find that you can you can you can do and you're not getting injured, so so I'm excited yeah, yeah. being injured. I mean, yeah. I've I've had a few cuts, but I'm not yeah, broke yeah. any bones, and you yeah. know what I mean. I've been at continuous, and there's some fighters that can do that. I think if they've got longevity, if you if you're able to be, um, if you're durable. Yeah. If you're a durable fighter in BKB, then yeah. that's where you belong. I think you'll always find out because when it comes to like their first fight, you'll always find out that people have their first fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fight. And well, look at your first main fight. My fault. Your, your your first main battle that you had with uh, with Franco that there showed if you was a BKB fighter. Yeah, or not. but you can always be the first one because you see someone has the one fight yeah, and you never yeah, see him again. You'll have one of them who, who's half trying to get up. I've been there in fights, mate, the day before the fight. Well, look at James. And you see other fighters or fighters trying to actually get out of the fight, mate. And he, he, they, they have a mark on them. They're, they're, they're waiting for the doctors not to clear them to box. Well, who was this the guy that James uh, James Dilly fought? Who was he? What was he called now? Uh, Hibbert was he? Hibbert, yeah, he didn't want to know. You and, know. and he comes from the boxing. Yeah, and so. He had he had a fight. He beat Tyler, didn't he? You can either, you can either get addictive or you just don't want none of it at all, mate. It's just, it's just too much. That's what it is, you know. Because I can't yeah. believe that. But I'm going on to my seventh bare knuckle fight now. <laughs> you know, seven already, man. Seven. What you had now? I mean, yeah, I have seven as well. Yeah, we had seven. I mean, there's better things to do with your time, isn't there? Huh? It's better things to do with your time than get smacked in bullets. Exactly that. So you, 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 you gotta, you've got to have a look. No one's told me this. What is that? What is, what is there? Lucky is it swimming? Swimming? No, so, swim, swimming baths are closed now, so we can't do that. I don't know. We might as well go and have a bare knuckle fight. Do you fancy going for a fucking run or fucking <laughs> having a tug? Well, we do that in between. We do that in between running in between and tugging. Rounds. In between running and tugging, yeah. <laughs> Crying and tugging. <laughs> <laughs> Scott just goes around annoying people in between uh, yeah. fights. Weeping, weeping. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Scott went um, sledging not long back, didn't we? Yeah, we that yeah, was we'll fun. That one. We, we mm. took uh, we took our lasses uh, pink beam around these country lanes, yeah. and uh, there was people watching us just skidding it left and right and up Fucking and down. Track with, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine Chuckle Brothers can't you? Asking for directions. Women looking as I were in All you need is a missing tool, Scott. I don't know how, didn't it? We got there, mate. Harry, old buddy, old pal. You know what? Fucking. Wait, I put a picture on Facebook a while ago. Him on there, uh, we, 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 we <laughs> cut him with tooth missing. Tooth missing. Yeah, Fuck yeah, you look like me a bit, don't I? Actually, yeah, yeah spitting down a bit. Yeah, I've got more brains on <laughs> we all, Yeah, we got all the way to the top and we all went down twice. Got kids and brought them back. You got a fucking Kid. trench foot, didn't you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you went down. down. My, okay. my administration's <laughs> bang on. It's your administration that's <laughs> fucked. You had black toes. That's why we're in Armin. Captain black toes. So we're getting rock. So that's a question that he asked a minute ago. Would I get Shane to BKB? Yeah. I would say, yeah, 100% I would. I'd say to Shane, I'd get Shane up, uh, up to his knowledge and, and his skill set on boxing. And yeah, and yeah of course I would. I push him towards that because yeah. I drive him like I've said this before this is one of my philosophies about about uh, boxing and, uh, and and BKB is I'd rather be a 60, 70 year old sat on the toilet remembering I can wipe my ass yeah. than, and not being able to do it because my hands are fucked 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather have my mind intact to know what my faculties are yeah. than not being able to use my hands. Yeah. Uh, let's be honest with you, right? If if you get to a point in your career in BKB where you can't throw your shots anymore and your hands are suffering, then you know it's time to get out. And if it isn't yeah. time to get out for you, then you continue. Then it's your own stupid yeah. fault and you get to yeah. that age. I mean, g- going back to the boxing <laughs> thing with a fucking... Obviously, with sustaining more injuries and stuff, you, you could say that about BKB. But you might be in a fucking one bedroom flat and a council estate in boxing. You, you could have it. a fucking mansion with a swimming pool. Yeah, yeah. You know, and be a brain donor like Scott. But fucking hell, Scott, <laughs> you've got, yeah, you've got, out you've got a few quid. <laughs> Scott, you, know I mean? you just <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Someone's getting get get sparks on this podcast. <laughs> 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 Scott, yeah, hold on, stop, get, guys, stop. Scott's going blue. In, <laughs> out, in, like out. Look at him; he's struggling to breathe. It does, it, it does struggle well, to breathe, doesn't it? He gets to breathe, he Scott, Scott's a local oxygen thief. <laughs> Police yeah. are always chasing him. Stop thieving the oxygen. Um, but yes, uh, I think... Not Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're on it, are we? So, um, so yes... Oh, RSO. <laughs> oh, get on the RSO, guys. If you're at home right now and you're feeling a bit depressed, <laughs> get on the RSO. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so, P, I want to ask you a few questions, actually. On, I want to ask you... Uh, would you ever fight again? Because you've you had you had quite a, a quite a good career, didn't you? And I did. You did stop. I fought from the age of twelve to twenty one. Yeah. And um, obviously, my partner and my my trainer passed away. Obviously, I started fighting, and then um, I started teaching with him. We became partners and got a gym together, and we got really busy. Um, my last fight, I fought French champion, which I knocked out in two rounds. So it was sort of nice to finish on that. But the reason that, I'd, I mean, I thought about it and laid in bed and fucking thought, shall I or whatever, did one for fucking charity or something. And I thought about it and, you know, when my mate died, I had to run a full-time gym yeah. six days a week, take the privates, grieve. I never had a chance to grieve. You know, Have I mean, you still grieved properly, do you reckon? And do you reckon you still... I'm you still, still grieving now. Yeah. I still think about him all the time. I dream about him, you know. It's fuck it, we're hard. It's from a man that had obviously picked me up from school and and teach me a lot about my life and made me believe that I could beat yeah, anybody yeah. in the world. Well, that's the what best. coaches there to do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, of course. Remember when we went out to my fight and you said to yeah. me, put your hand on my shoulder and you went, yeah, yeah. smudge. Don't worry, when, it, when the bell goes, you'll turn it on and you, know, you always do believe in Always, mate, and I've got goosebumps up my body because yeah, yeah. they're the memories that this sport, this sport takes and the friends you meet and you can't beat that, it's invaluable. But um, no, I'm happy training fighters now and I'm uh, surrounded by some great people and I've got some great lads on, you know, with Jack Bates and Mick Liam on Michael Favera. You've got good coaches as well, haven't you? You've got Kobe, you've yeah, got Darius. Yeah, Kobe, McNamara's just turned pro. I've got a fucking great lad in Darius. Very good kid is Darius. Daryl Kendall. We've got a good set of people in the gym. You know, even a sports therapist, Jade, it's a family. It's yeah. a family smudge. Everybody's welcome. Well, the thing is, mate, when you're dragging, uh, well, not dragging, but when you're, when you're getting lads, from Birmingham wanting yeah, to come yeah. over and train with this, your gym that, that's, that kind, that's kind obviously, of a um, obviously, testament isn't it? Obviously, I hope so you know what I mean obviously stay grounded we're doing something right and keep on the right track but um, no I was training I was training to fight, uh, just go over to Thailand to train once and I'd finished the session with Steve and um I sort of knelt down, you know what I mean? And we're just talking up mats and stomach like that. And he says, oh, do us a favour. He says, never fight without me in your corner. Yeah. So that, that's... I'll, that's I'll is that, that is that the sort of relationship you're getting with, with these boys now? Because yeah, that's the sort of relationship yeah. you've got with me, which is, a, which is a good relationship to have with a fighter. Yeah, I mean, obviously, first couple of bare knuckle fights, you had smudge. We started training down at gym. We were doing a little bit together. And then we sat down. We talked about bringing you down away and... Like now we've been in the trenches a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mentioned it the other day. I don't know a lot of people. Obviously, they don't see the cameras in the corner. We trained for the Lafferty fight. Lafferty is known as a warrior. You know what I mean? Yeah, They'll yeah. fucking fight and he couldn't have a straight. Well, they've absolutely fucking battered Scott. They're not phony at Scott. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew, I knew yeah, that. I just got a short notice. I went to war. It's, not it, it didn't. It didn't. Listen, I, listen, <laughs> listen. We 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 executed a game plan that just worked to treat, and it, I think was it some was it a five round of that? Something? Five round of that. Yeah. So yeah. I think it was something like the fourth round. It was just going fucking perfect. I just couldn't believe it. A couple of times. My heart was in my mouth because he'd go rushing and try war and for fucking get back as much as box, you know what I mean? You don't because it's a prize fighter, you've got to look after your yeah, yeah, after yeah, your yeah. faculties, your tools, we're looking on to the next round. And um 
I said, Smudge, fuck yeah, you're fighting brilliant. And just grabbed me by the back at neck and just stuck one on me on my lips and went, I love you, and stood back up. <laughs> and went, I fucking couldn't believe it. I fucking I said to the corner man, have I got any lipstick on me? My lass will kill me. But no, it's Wait. just times like that. It's just times like that. And I mean that's I'd, what that's what you your your ex coach and partner and Yeah, we uh, had that fans. we had that made me believe that I could be I could be anyone, do you know what I mean? And at the time I was fighting some good level kids and um I stopped at a young age but so do you reckon it's because you'd rather have him in your corner than not? I'd and, rather and have him in my corner. So so basically you do it out of honour of your, of your, your old coach, of, partner of and best friend. my old coach, yeah. My oh, partner that, and my that's, best friend. that's good, that, mate. It's good. I mean, it, you, you know you, you know, you don't get in fucking gym you, to, to do any sparring. He never does any sparring, neither. No, I don't need to because I've done that for years. It was like I explained to our lasses young ones the other day, we're getting a little bit older, that when I used to go to school, I'd run to school and I'd bring my fucking my, my school clothes in my rucksack I get changed and changing and wiped down for like a fucking scruffy bastard. Go into my lessons, get picked up at quarter past three and leave the gym at quarter past nine on a night. Yeah. And that were me, you know, training for Thailand, running in snow at five in the morning and me getting school in and that. So yeah, we added that the snow then, running in snow just you know, make sure that we all fit out. Yeah, but it's just it's times you know like saying, that yeah. that people don't see and they yeah. think, Oh, he's got a big fucking gym. Nah, like you're that, right, blah, man, you're all right, blah. yeah. But cause they want a lot of content yourself, like this you? before. There's not even a, loads of fights up and stuff like that. But um, no, I'm happy being a trainer and doing what I'm doing. It's like you, Freddie Roach or Joe Gallagher, you wouldn't see them sparring their fighters. I think it's a bit nah, um, right, dishonourable, right. really. Yeah, yeah, no, and you... I don't want to not fuck out his, you know. <laughs> 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 so, it's a good got... question, though. No, you're right, man. You're right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing James, you were probably the same as his young kid because you did uh, you box as a young amateur as well, didn't you? Yeah, box as an amateur. Now I've got, got my own gym now as well. Uh, so I know how much time it takes and obviously just building it up. I remember the time when I first took over my gym and people were going, yeah, don't worry, you'll yeah. get there, get there. And I, I just couldn't see no, I couldn't see no light. Look you know, at it now just, though, look at it now. You're doing yeah, it. well, there, you d- d- see it just comes, comes through the hard work with the 12 hours a day because my gym's open seven days a week. You know, you've had a good vision, haven't you? You've, you've, you've reviewed your uh, your gym how you wanted it to be yeah. and you, you've got there, haven't you? Yeah, so no, and slowly but surely, I remember every time I come down to your gym, you'd be like, yes, yeah, Smudge, I'm going to get this and these are on the way soon and I'm getting this next. And I'm like, bloody hell, you're getting this done fast. I mean, it has taken a little while. And time people come down. To it, they don't know it was differences in the gym. It has took time. It takes time yeah, out of yeah. your life because you're not just if running the gym is running. The gym, it's it, people come to the gym to train. You, you're speaking to people. You're talking to people. It's not like you just own a shop. You just check in and give them some stuff, and you get the change and you're gone. Like yeah. you, you're dealing with people day in day out. You know you're Same speaking to so many, and sometimes well, you can take their. The well, issues and stuff. Well, you've all got like he 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 works at uh, works out of Tobin's. You you've got your Jim Canelli gym, yeah. and then you've got your you've got Golden yeah, yeah. Team. So you all got separate gyms. Do you, yeah. you not find that, that all these gyms have got a massively separate personality? That you find that your gym when you step through the doors, you feel a different sort of energy. You feel a different sort of. Well, look, uh, man, I've history. got my own. I've got my own gym in Birmingham, and I could yeah, be in there mean, yeah. five, seven days a week if I want to. But I I I, I decided to travel up to uh, to Golden Team. Yeah, no. Different atmosphere, different people. What I'm getting at is, yeah, things, what I'm getting you know? is obviously the the, the, uh, the history of the gyms itself. You know, yeah. obviously you ca- you carry a bit of an heritage with your gym. Obviously, you were going there before you you owned the gym. Yeah. Yeah. You got that that gym you've been going to for years, and you you train people at the gym, and yeah. you own the gym that you started up yeah. as well. Yeah. So do you not find that when you got these different gyms when you step through the doors especially as fighters that travel around like you James and I you don't. Scott and myself yeah. and you yeah, obviously yeah. do as well when you go mm-hmm. into these gyms you find that you feel a different sort of energy you walk into some gyms and you feel just ma- massively alive you walk into some other gyms and you feel a bit dead I agree, I agree. it's you just the proof that. there like Pavic was in Pavic was in Birmingham yesterday yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and I'm up Leeds today, yeah, so yeah. it's proof of fact, isn't it? We're yeah. all travelling around. We've got our own yeah, gyms, yeah. but we're still travelling around. Some other people's gyms, why? It's exciting it's as well, isn't it? It's really change, exciting. mate. It's yeah, of course. I get, really I get what you're saying, though, Smudge. You're on about when you walk into somewhere, the atmosphere that you feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, course, I, yeah. I, I travel all around country with, with the lads sparring and stuff like that. And I've been to a lot of gyms, and I do feel like the atmospheres are different now. There's a lot of old school boxing gyms that I believe that you know you walk in our gym. You know, it don't matter whether you're the fucking bin man or a world champion, you're going to get checked the same. There's no egos, just hard work, you know. Mm. And I'll try and make sure that I know everyone's name. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. that's the first thing I try to do when people walk through the day. So they, the, the gym it, to walk through, it's a, it's a, it's a scary place. Yeah, Especially yeah, as a yeah young it's lad quite intimidating, smudge. isn't it? But I do think that a lot of gyms are different. You've got some gyms, look at you sideways. They've got to give you time of day, you know. But then, you you know, Tobin's is very similar. Tobin's my partner in, when we do promotions together. Yeah, it's very yeah. family-orientated. Yeah. You, you be, it becomes a social People circle. People come in and watch. 
You yeah, know, people yeah. actually because that don't you think that's that's gone away now. People don't people don't really go and stay and watch the children do what they're doing anymore. No. They, you know they they don't they don't feel like they can stay around like boxing gyms yeah. in general as well yeah, yeah. or karate gyms or any sort of gyms like that. I feel like like you, you you're not really you don't you're not really feeling welcome like at yeah. these gyms these family gyms yours and Tobin's yeah, yeah, and yeah. other gyms around you yeah. do you feel like you can come it's like territorial isn't yeah, it people's course, gyms yeah. you know if you're in your own gym you're training that, and someone you don't know walks into your gym you can have a look like in my gym yeah someone, yeah, yeah. Like, someone right, I know everyone who comes to my gym I know them all by name you know but I can know if someone walks in that gym that I don't I can know straight away and that's what the other people are like they clock that as well so it's, it's territorial isn't it yeah you know, yeah but like like gyms. you're saying with, with uh, Porrix especially people walk in and, and people don't really look in that sort of manner they're looking they're wanting to help straight away aren't they mm. you know yeah, that? yeah yeah like that's yeah. the sort of, that's the sort of people we invite into no, our no definitely into our gym. definitely and, and people make places and you've got a lot of characters and you're definitely one of them smudge <laughs> you know I've got I've had so many people walk through the doors over the years. I've had people get married that I've met at the gym. Yeah. Do you know, it's mental, the people that, that you do actually meet and fucking... the what, you're stu- holding wedding ceremonies? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> listen... Punch it, your time each are on first day. Times are hard. And I know that, I know that if, you look, if you look on Viva Street, like Scott's a, a page boy. Like <laughs> that's why he's wedding in gold yeah. and that. You know what I mean? So, no, it's, a gym's a great place and that's why in this this time that we're in people mm. are suffering mentally aren't they yeah i've mentally. seen that on the, i've seen that online actually there's, there's certain gyms there's one down in liverpool actually that have been uh that's been fighting back against the system yeah. pushing back yeah and they're uh, they're trying to get the gyms up and running again and they're trying to get these the a bit of funding from yeah. the from the, well, the uh, back people. at night april the 12th april the 12th yeah back yeah but how long's it gonna be open for how april gonna be open the 12th for? but it's like you're saying there smudge you know you can teach one-on-one you can't you know how many are you going to have in a class you know you've got to start booking systems and all that yeah, it's, it's, it's just gonna it's no longer as flexible. You're no longer as flexible as you yeah. to because you can't swap and change. Yeah, you can't swap. You can't free people in at once just because no. someone's missed. You know this what I mean? Is it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's going to take its toll on a lot of people, and and I don't think people are really thinking that far forward just yet until it hits them. When it, when it does, like like you've just mentioned yeah. it there, I don't think there's that many people actually thinking that far yeah, forward. Yeah, it's to come in it. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, I, I was in the market the other day and. Uh, I just I just went for some fruit and as I was coming through the market I thought I'd just sit down on the benches. The benches in the middle of nowhere, just basically right slam bang in the middle of the market. Yeah. And they've got all these different um barriers and, and lines on the floor. And uh, I went and sat on this bench and this guy comes over to me, this security guy, and he says to me, um, you can't sit there and I went, well, Why can't I sit here? I went, Well, because he says on there you can't sit there. I went, So listen, you, they've put all these other things in place, these lines on the floor and these these visors so you yeah. can't see and it's an expensive thing to do. Why won't they move this bench? If no one can sit in it, why won't they just move the bench? Yeah, yeah. I said, yeah. they'll tell you why, because I want you to stand there and, and, and direct people on what to do and, yeah. and where to go. And that's what that's what we've got to come in. Mm. After lockdown finishes, we've got that to come again. We've got we've got the the um, the communist-type um, agenda that's going on. So oh, what, what happened to the fighting time? No, we're on about, you know, we're on about it now. We're going to say oh, we're about... Yeah, about, yeah. He's <laughs> <yeah. laughs> going off, going off. No, we're about to say yeah, that's yeah. the issue we've got now with the, with the gyms because you're going, to have, you're going to have enough authorities coming into the gyms and they're going to be trying to scare mongers. They're, they're, they're going to try and stop the classes. Yeah, of course gonna, they are, I can yeah. see yeah. something with the classes and... You know. okay, on that front, it's quite funny you say that. I think that people feel like they've got more authority now in general, certain people in certain workplaces. Mm. Me and Jack come on from in Birmingham and we stopped at Starbucks and yeah. fuck it, I'm dying for a piss pull of, you know, it's like, we're into Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, I remember. You it. cannot use these <laughs> toilets, so fucking Jack went like that, no, fuck it, I ran Phil, you know what I mean, had a piss, come back, I says, go on, it's your go anyways. Jack's coming out, woman comes from behind, so you can't use them toilets, fucking hell, I only needed a piss, I've been now, do you know wow. what I mean, fucking let me use the pisser. So if you need toilet now, but you, you can't go to toilets, you, you have to piss outside. You have a outside. piss, you yeah. fucking get piss, yeah. Arrested, yeah. Definitely, definitely <laughs> you you just piss your pants, you mate. I'll just do a big log and throw it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> his undies are like Christmas log. His undies are like Papa Dom's or that one there. We'll let schools James yawn. I don't think his body's just tired from nah, all the training. Just done a session yeah, I know, mate. I know. Yeah. I've seen. Not, well, I travelled two hours. I've seen. Session with Payne and a yeah. podcast with Smudge. Listen, yeah, I've seen, man. I've seen. So um, I've, I've uh, recently been in touch with a guy that's uh, all about natural medicines and uh, he's, uh, he's starting up his medical centre over in Wakefield when it, it helps. It finds the issues you've got in your body and uh, it helps you with 
um, frequency and vibrations through holding these uh, these these right. little handheld uh, devices. Oh. And uh, it's coming out soon. Our service, it's coming out soon. It's going to be it's going to be like a, a new medical thing that's that's going to be helping a lot of people. Uh, how it does helps it with work depression then? and stuff is as well. It, is it, it's, your it's, it scan, your it scans your body. If you if you look online, uh, look on my friends list on Facebook. It's called Mark Johnson. Mark right. with a, a C at the end of his name. Okay. And uh, this medical this medical centre he's got is uh, it basically does uh, full bio scans, biometric yeah. scans of your body. It finds out what's wrong with you. It tells you if you're deficient of fibres, right. if you're deficient of uh, any sort of minerals and stuff. And then uh, uh, then they send you into a treatment room and they help you in the treatment room with this machine that that, that, that helps run analysis and then repair your body. Good. So you should look it up. I'll put something on Facebook about it. Hopefully, it, hopefully, hopefully it can help people with depression. Yeah, no, no, it does it. It helps it scan your brain and stuff as well, yeah. Two of biggest killers, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Can do uh, for them then. Yeah, of course. Have a little look on there, but yeah. um, like we're talking about sponsorships. So what, what sponsorships have we got now, lads? Are, are we uh, are we looking to? I've got a few, few, yeah, sessions. I can remember them, um, oh, yeah. helpfulplumber.co.uk from a good friend, Gerard Corrigan, uh, and Martin, uh, Intech Property Solutions, Adam Powell, Birmingham Pressure Washing, yeah. Dr. Green, Oh, I, don't I remember when we got you started with sponsorships. Remember? I remember I don't even know how to ask for a sponsor. I remember you got me to do my template. You know? <laughs> remember I did a little template like, for you. About? I was buzzing about that. Getting uh, and Coa and Coa scaffolding. Um, yeah, sponsorships are the things that keep you going, aren't they, mate? Yeah, they've been, they've, do you know what? They, they take a lot of so stress much. off. You know, they take a lot of stress off with, with things. You know. Why well, you're inspiring others, they're helping you inspire others, which is a good thing. Yeah, really, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they, they're giving you opportunity, but I didn't, you didn't know. I didn't know what to expect from them. You know, but what they actually do do for you. Amazing, you know, like, like I paid for one of my camps and one of my sponsors, you know what I mean? And yeah. without them, like Phil yeah. Walker, um, yeah, Phil Walker's always he's a good, he's a big advocate for BKB he, and he those fighters. Me and it's paid for my full fight camp as well, so that's good, do you know what I mean? So, so you, you, sponsors you, do help instead of, I know, I just hope I haven't missed out any of my sponsors. I don't know, <laughs> no, 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 what no, sponsors have you got right now, Scott? Uh, you right sponsors. Um, I've got three cars. I've got loads, mate. I can't remember them, to be honest. Oh, I'm look here. I've got too many sponsors, mate. Sure that Evolve. Um, as it, I'll just, so York, so Phil, York, Phil sponsors yeah, as well. Yeah, Yorkshire Carpets, Phil Walker, yeah. So does he do both Evolve and, and uh, Yorkshire Carpets? Yeah, I do both of them, yeah. As well, yeah, that's yeah. good, is that? Nice yeah, one, Phil. Yeah. Appreciate it for that. It's good helping the boys out, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, and obviously, we've got Southerns with... Uh, with well, well, do you know Golden what? Team. I've just had a new sponsor come in that I'd like to say a massive thank you to which is jake's truck shop um two lads that have just obviously set up a massive business and they're, i think they're only about 24 25 and they're, they're pumping quite a lot of money into the gym to Helping come out, smudge yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna have new boxing rings you know canvases we're gonna have a brand new matting they were doing all those toilets up uh, they've already bought me some punch you know boxing bags and stuff like that making the gym uh, top level facilities and place to go so that's Jake's Chuck Shop on Instagram or Facebook yeah. I want you to give him a follow because this lad is, is really really both lads are really helping me out to get the gym facilities to yeah, be yeah. the elite of the elite of which I want it because you go to a lot of uh, boxing gyms and it's spit and sawdust and there's no up with that because that's produced a lot a lot of champions them gyms but yeah, I want you to be able to walk in my gym and be able to, you know come train eat chill out get a shower relax watch a bit of TV PlayStation yeah like you say, and family I want it friendly top of gym. the range Fam family friendly gym yeah. family friendly gym so a massive thank you to Jake's Truck Shop oh, that's brilliant that. great news is and, that and uh, can I say a big shout out to uh, Mark Royley uh, French Polishing as well please yeah of course can't be on, missing yeah, the madness how long is his list <laughs> Let me see how long your list is. What do you mean? What do you mean a thousand pound fight? Punch people, you know, I'm not good at this sort of stuff. No, yeah, do you know what though, lads? Uh, you've 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 come into this uh, sport. We all have we've come into this sport as uh, not knowing what to what to expect, and we've slowly but surely built our own brand really mm -hmm. uh, like you say well, I, I brought the sponsorship up because I want to show that people that, that we do get the sponsorship names out and that sponsorships are a massive thing for us for the shows and for uh, for the fighters as well for the, for the training camps um, I know that I wouldn't be able to do the things I would do without my sponsors yeah. and, uh, and and they've helped me with, with my food my diets uh, getting me from A to B you know even, even hotels have said, helped me out with hotels so you know the support that we get from these people. I just want to let you know that is uh, it don't go unnoticed from by no. Nah, one, definitely really. not. Definitely not. And I appreciate all my sponsors as well because you don't understand how much they're helping, so they do yeah. help you. You know, especially what they give you. Like, oh, for instance, like Halfway Plumber paid for all my tracksuits for my fights. 
I mean, they cost like close to a thousand pounds for like, six yeah. track suits and, and, and six walkout tops and these ain't no jokes, man. You know, and it cost me almost a thousand pounds. So it's all that. Just clear, it, clear the yeah. stress off, you know. Clear the stress off. Come I had on, one that paid for for most of my camp, you know. So the, without these, man, you'd be out of pocket. You, you, you'd be worrying about stuff and stuff like that. Like, they take away a lot of stress through that, you know. Of course, man. Of course, mm. especially right now, what's going on around the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm gonna ask you some quick fire questions. All right, so. Uh, Favourite food and why, Scott? What's that? Favourite food. Favourite food and why? Oh, why do you say favourite? Favourite food. Because that's what I said. I said favourite. <laughs> All right. Favourite like food. Favourite food, Scott? Uh, I like steak. And why do you like steak? It's just nice and it's full of blood. I just like I just like hearing Scott just say some mad random shit. No, I don't. It's just steak. Um, what else is there? Right, okay. Do you have your steak? Uh, steak? Uh, steak? Favourite fighter and why? As in boxer? Yeah. Uh, oh, five and all fighter in general, any fighter. Uh, I always like Bernard Hopkins for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, and he fought. He just kept fighting, didn't he? Yeah. He nice. Just the style of him and the way he used to talk and stuff like that. And why he used to like do what Carry he used to do. Pump. Yeah, yeah, exactly that man. He's very, yeah. very sharp. Come from right. Nottingham. Best chat up line for you, P. Um, are you Irish? No. No. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Yeah, are you Irish? Uh, no. <laughs> I say why? Yeah, why? So, excuse me, darling. Are you Irish? Uh, why? It's my cock's doubling. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said no bad language on here. Um, you like that, Scott? Uh, <laughs> right, I just, I just want to say thanks to the guests. This is the first time I've uh, done a podcast and it, it's been great having... I know, how much uh, we get paid, man? You know, I'm paid I'm nothing, we'll speak after, so you know what, mate? I, 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 I wish you all the best, well. Smudge, because uh, to yeah. be honest with you, I think you've been a great host and I think you'll have some great guests. Yeah, yeah, will, yeah, so yeah, I want to thank you guys for coming up and doing this podcast. You're welcome, uh, mate. This has been my first uh, first episode. We're going to have uh, a lot of different random people. We're not going to be just, just getting fighters on. We're going to be getting scientists. and We're going to get Rick Simpson on. We'll get Rick Simpson on. Can you get Rick Flair? I've got a question for you. If you could have any guest on, who would you have? Um, right now, oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Phil, Phil Pierce. I'd say. <laughs> Phil Pierce. <laughs> Phil Pierce. I think I get Phil Pierce on. I don't know. There's a lot of Elvis. people I like to. There's a lot of, um, I don't know. Boris Johnson. I mean, Bob Marley. Johnson Bob Marley has... I've got another one for Bob you. Marley. <laughs> if you could spend one hour here interviewing one superstar, one celebrity, alive or dead, who would it be? Uh, Jim Carrey. Really? Yeah, Jim Carrey. What, very Jim Carrey? The comedian? Oh, yeah, yeah very interesting. Truman Show and all very that. Very interesting, yeah. Oh, you've had easy on the Illuminati. Oh, here we are, here we are. Look at these boys there. Oh, don't you, can, you, that you, oh, you, can, you can always, <laughs> you can always count on your pals Spirits, to start ripping you in. Spiritually awakening. Oh, love it, love it, love it. Right, lads, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you for watching Alternative Podcast. Thank you.